Dear spectators and listeners, welcome to this presentation in which I would like to talk about one of my favorite composers, about Franz Schubert. In 1997, it was the 200th birthday of Schubert, I was asked for the first time to speak about his uh, stylistic aspects and uh, during the last years I got more and more fascinated and passionate by his way of language in his music. There are not so many Viennese composers, I think Schubert is really an uh, authentic Viennese composer. And I talked about this theme not only in Vienna, but also, for instance, at the Tchaikovsky Conservatory in Moscow and at the Music University in Dresden, Germany. Let's start immediately, and um, the theme is more or less a question. Franz Schubert, was he the first expressionist in music? I will try to show some aspects which may prove or not prove that he was. My lecture is divided into three parts. The first part is, to, um, is touching the life and several aspects of his way of life, of his composing. The second part is concentrated on some of his leader because I think it is absolutely necessary to know them if we play instrumental music of Schubert, because the language is quite the same. Schubert didn't change when he wrote Lieder or Sonatas. And the third part will be a selection of Sonatas, some facts pointed out. First of all, let's speak about his life. I suggest that it's very difficult to find a renowned person who is not suffering under getting attached a lot of cliches to. I also suggest that there are not many renowned persons in the world whose cliches are as far from reality as they are in the case of Franz Schubert. Let me mention just a few of these often to be heard adverbs. He was naive and innocent, dreamy, living in an ivory tower. He loved society and as well, for instance, that he was composing fastly, making a lot of mistakes because of that, etc. None of these attributes are fitting with the real Schubert. How could it happen that there have been spread so many distorting pictures about Schubert? Of course, there are several causes, but I would like to point out especially two of them. Obviously, one of the main ones is to contribute to the era in which Schubert has lived. Far on to the 20th century, he was titled to the, the musician of the palace, of the salon, mainly representative for the period of Biedermeier. And to a certain extent, this is even right if you consider that the period of Biedermeier has nothing to do with the ideal and harmonious world. Or well, the name Biedermeier is as often as wrongly used today for. This time was exactly the opposite of living in peace and harmony. As it was the time of the Prince of Metternich, the foreign minister of the Emperor Francis I and later on the Chancellor of the Austrian Empire. Until to the revolution in 1848. The name Metternich stands for the most radical restrictions in human rights, for spying, for censorship. Imagine that this censorship did not only touch the written words, but as well instrumental music. Schubert had to send every instrumental composition to the so-called 
Bücherrevisionsamt to get the allowances for performing or printing, for instance, a symphony or a sonata. As a reaction of this omnipresent reprisals, the bourgeoisie withdrew from the official life to private homes. There began to develop fascinating art circles in which met young poets and writers as well as musicians and painters and of course many of the contemporary music has been performed there as well. These circles took place especially in the house of the family Sonnleitner and developed in 1821 to the so-called Schubertiaden. But in these meetings not only readings of important literature took place, but as well of the most recent philosophical publications and, last but not least, political manifestos were explicated and discussed. These artistic, philosophic and political circles had a great influence on the personality of Schubert, as well as on his oeuvre, especially as far as it concerns the lead composer, as he got to know so much poetry, which became the source of this awesome lead writing. The way he dealt with this literature stemmed the style of his music and not only the one of his vocal compositions. The second important cause to, of so many misunderstandings in the reception of his instrumental music, of, at my opinion, is that people did not really understand his way of musical expression. Just as a composer of Lieder he has been acclaimed. Maybe because people concentrated more on the text, on the words, than on the music. I cannot find any other explanation on why his instrumental music has been ignored for such a long time, also we can find the same musical speech, the same emotional expressions, the same mental background in these compositions. Even far into the 20th century, only a few people realized what an extraordinary composer Schubert has been. Let us listen to what the famous conductor Nicolas Anoncourt has said about Schubert in an interview in 1986. I do not know any other composers who represent such a total unique world like Schubert. This is one of the most curious facts in music history. He is an absolute monolith. I do not see any other phenomenon like him in any other musical period. A very impressive statement. And if we listen just to a few bars of the middle part of the Apprentu in E flat major, which is often described as an example for the so called Salon music, we already can realize that there are many stunning details in this part. First, our impromptu is written in E flat major, but the middle part is in B minor. And then we have this very strange moment. Sforzato on the dissonant harmony. And then there's this short crescendo and diminuendo. This is already a sign that there must be much more in the music of Schubert that does not at all fit with the smooth atmosphere of a salon. So what makes him so different from other composers at this time? Other composers dedicated their oeuvre to God or worked for their principles, as there were the archbishops, electors, emperors, donators, generally members of the nobility. 
Later, especially Beethoven and Mozart additionally integrated the ideals of classicism and the ideas of the French Revolution as their freedom, equality and brotherliness. But Schubert, he was in some way different. Of course, he also wrote many pieces ordered by different people, but Schubert was, in my opinion, the first composer whose central aim was to exhibit himself, himself as a human being with all kinds of feelings, emotions, and above all, his inner conflicts. This was not a kind of egocentricity. For this Schubert was much too decent and humble. No, Schubert's works demonstrated in a never before existing quality how a human being is reacting on the world around him, on his destiny and especially also how his inner contradictions world looks like. He did this in the most subtle explicity, explicity and in shaping all different levels of human emotions that one could even say that Schubert has expressed in music what only 90 years later has been formulated in a scientific way by Sigmund Freud. Maybe it was Robert Schumann who has realized this fact for the first time when he wrote to Clara in 1829, one year after Schubert's death. There is no other music than Schubert's one which is psychologically as remarkable as Schubert's. And later, only a few composers have such a unique individuality and even the least have written so much for themselves and for their heart. One of the most renowned interpreters of Schubert's piano music, Alfred Brendel, has written in one of his books, Schubert is a great rambler who is attracted by abysses. He walks along on their border with the security of a somnambulist. The wandering is the romantic condition in which you can be impelled and get aware of the panic of hopelessness as for instance in the C minor sonata. Underneath of happiness lives desperation and consciousness abruptly darkens. The human being Schubert stands before us in an incredible complexity and we are able to trace his subtlest emotions. I can imagine that people at this time might have been shocked as they recognized their own emotional conflicts in this musical network. Therefore, the one who just consumes his music will never be able to understand Schubert. The one who passes through it will understand Schubert's words, which even can become a mirror of our own. Terms like drive in the sense of life urging us onward, delusion, the steadily recurring longing for death, mental conflicts, the desperation under the power of reality, the escaping in a dream world, desperation even combined with aggression, there are many of the parameters in between which Schubert's music is fluctuating. But Schubert does not show them as clearly delimited elements, but in a permanent interplay of this inner psychological conflict. Let us take a short look on what a personality Schubert was. His friend, Bauernfeld, characterized him as a double nature, who unified sensuality with melancholia. Some other friends underline that he, has an extremely, he was an extremely honest person whose frankness even could be offending. But he said himself, I never will calculate with my emotions or use them in a tactical way. As it exists in me, I express it, punctum. Punctum means that's it. Even for his closest friends, Schubert remained a mystery. 
Very rarely he opened himself and declared himself as an incredible reflective person who mulled a lot over the political, the philosophical world and over the arts. But he did not write that down because he had to say what he had to say, he used to say it in music. Here are two anecdotes which may lighten up his personality a little bit. A friend asked Schubert in a letter, how are you? And he answered, I feel very bad because I feel cheerful. Schubert suffered so much in his life that he could not understand how it could happen that he sometimes felt happy too. Similar to that, as Mr. Dessauer argued that, the things, that he thinks that Schubert's leader are sometimes too melancholic. Schubert answered, do you know any cheerful music? Maybe the Lied Ich Unglückselker Atlas number no. 8 from his last leaders put joined together under the title Schwanengesang expresses the best how he felt in this world. The text by Heinrich Heine says, I unhappy Atlas must bear a world the whole world of sorrows, I bear the unbearable. The idea comes from the ancient world. You can see a sculpture which is dating from the second century after Christ and which is a Roman copy of a Greek sculpture showing Atlas bearing the world on his back. Musically, Schubert expresses this unbearable destiny with two heavy quarter notes. beginning of the lead sounds like this. Don't be afraid, I won't sing. And so on. And we have the same element in his last sonatas. They were written at the same time, so it's not really surprising, but it's the ground expression of Schubert. In the C minor sonata, the beginning is... And the A major sonata also begins... So we can see already that these characteristics exist in all kinds of his music he has written, not only in the leader. He was the same individual character whether he wrote leader or symphonies or piano sonatas. In this context it is necessary to underline that he was far away from being a hasty or even sloppy composer. We know today a lot of testimonies that Schubert worked very hard and intensively, that he planned exactly what he was doing and he filed out even smallest details. Just an example from his famous lead, The Trout, he composed five versions. At the end of my first part, I would like to come back once more to the title I have chosen for my lecture. In 1928, one of the most renowned encyclopedias of that time and of today, the famous Brockhaus, wrote, Expressionism started in about 1912 and it means those art of today which struggles to express the inner experiences and not illustrations of the impressions by the world around us. This struggle is conditioned as well by fiery temper as it is by mystical religiosity and by a tendency towards abstracticism. Aren't these exactly the parameters we can find in the instrumental music of Franz Schubert? We will see it in the following parts.